Welcome to another episode of the Huxley Morton podcast. This week, I am joined by founder and CEO of Triticon, Anders uh, Morton from over in, in Europe. Anders, um, you and I have just spoken off air about the terrible weather that we're both experiencing, taking um, sons and daughters in, into school. Uh, aside from the, the weather front, which us Brits love talking about, um, how has the new year uh, and 2021 kicked off for yourself? um I, yeah good i think you know it's been great kind of starting a new start a new fresh start and, and and getting kind of out of that 2020 which i think was a challenge for for, for most of us in, in in very many different ways mm. so i think it's been great to, to kick off a new year and uh you know i think also from business perspective we we're seeing some things starting to to pick up which of course is a positive thing um as well right? Yeah. So look, you guys, um, I, I guess I know that you, you started back in, in 2015. And so you've been going just over five years now. But give us a, a bit of an introduction as to, you know, who, who you guys are at um, Triticon and, and what you, you're doing on a, a day to day basis, effectively. Yeah, sure. I mean, we, we are a small consultant company, uh, as I say, started in, in, in 2015. Mm -hmm. And um, we call ourselves e-clinical consultants or e-clinical experts. Uh, e-clinical in our world, meaning, you know, uh, technology and systems used for, for clinical development and clinical trials. So that's yeah. our workspace. Uh, we're not a CRO. Uh, we're not a technology provider. We are a consultant and advisory company. So mm -hmm. we try to help our clients with selecting systems, selecting vendors, implementation, development and growth of what they do. Uh, again, more from a advisory role. Uh, product management um, in that space. Yeah. So okay. as I said, I'm, I'm co-founder, um, consultant uh, in my daily job, if you like. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, look, that's kind of good to know because I, I think some one of my the biggest frustrations I see right across the board on LinkedIn and, and often people's profiles is just trying to understand what companies do. I mean, if you ever look at look at mine, it's it's pretty much what it says on the tin. You know, my profile says we do recruitment. Um, because yeah. I, I just get frustrated um, with trying to understand things. So in terms of your business, you're consulting um, and it's, you're not a CRO yourself. So who are your clients? Who, who are you providing to? Yeah, uh, I think the, the, the primary, um, uh, the, the, the majority of clients to make them is small, uh, small farmers and biotech startups where mm -hmm. we help them try to understand what they need to do with relates to, to dealing with their clinical data selecting vendors, how they need to think about systems, um, the space and where they, where they need to start. Uh, so small ones, but also some mid, uh, mid-term clients where, where uh, you know, mid-sized pharma, growing pharma, you need to take the next step in terms of saying, what do my technology infrastructure look like? Uh, mm -hmm. What kind of sourcing model should I choose? How do I deal with a combination of a large global CRO and a technology provider? How do I set things up in the right way? Mm -hmm. So. Uh, small, mid-size, but, but actually also we have uh, helped some technology providers, some of the major technology providers on developing their services and their technology, um, then taking a little bit of the other approach, um, not from the pharma side, we know technology providers, but from helping the technology providers, we understand pharma. So what should you do with your technology and your services to yeah. improve what you do and to improve your your offering basically yeah. so you're kind of bridging a bridging a bit of a gap there and, and connecting pharma with technology and, and I, I guess at the moment technology for everyone whether it's pharma or anywhere around the world has kind of exploded um so I, i'm guessing that things have, have started to generate and, and the innovations are coming through and you're perhaps in a, a position where business is probably looking fairly promising uh, moving forward is it right yeah, it is. It is. I think it's. I think it's. Uh, it's definitely as I said, technology is everywhere, right? And um, mm. uh, and it's growing, of course. And I think, of course, you and I sit here now in front of technology. Uh, you could say, and everyone has kind of learned how to work with Teams and Zoom and whatever it is, and kind of actually got even more technology into the daily work life. Uh, you know, when it comes to clinical research than, than maybe they had before. Yeah. So yes, it looks good. Um, it's okay. Uh, still, I would say that. Of course, last year was a challenge because people were very busy with just dealing with the situation. And this mm -hmm. with new technology, you're doing things differently, which is maybe something that we stand for. Try to do things not maybe the full traditional way, uh, trying to do what we say more with less, uh, but maybe a bit unorthodox and a bit you know radical even sometimes. Uh, that was not really what people wanted to go last year. Uh, yeah. Hopefully, 
from this disruptive situation last year, you know, people were a little bit more open also to, to, to do things, you know, in new ways. Yeah. Okay. I mean, like you, you touched on it there and I ask pretty much everyone who, who comes on, on the show and that is kind of, why did you, you know, why did you start the business? How did it start? Because, you know, for me and for a lot of the other entrepreneurs I've, I've spoken to, it's, it's sometimes out of frustration. It's sometimes out of, they feel, feel they can do stuff better. I mean, you touched on the point that you wanted to do more for less. Could you just expand on that a little bit for yeah, me? Yeah, sure. Sure. I mean, yeah, we did. Um, I was at the time in 2015, I've been working uh, quite a few years in the space, but from within companies. I've been running uh, major change programs with technology and major implementation pro programs uh, from mm. within Pharma. I've yeah. also been line, you know, line manager sitting within, within the line functions and then just ended up with quite heavy projects and programs, uh, a lot of meetings all day long. And, and, and mm. I think honestly, you know, a heavy process to me. And, and again, also being met by... Uh, Primarily, honestly, from, from, from a lot of the kind of bigger consultancy companies with, you know, okay, we're going to help you with this. You need one or two or three subject matter experts. You need one product manager, one change manager, one someone who understands strategy and a key account, whatever you have, right? And we said, okay, there's a better way, both for me personally to try to, you know, have more impact or contribution mm. in what I do, but also a better way of doing consultancy, again, especially for, for uh, on the advisory level, especially maybe on a little bit smaller companies where again, coming in with a program set up where, where the consultants are more people than employees, it doesn't really make sense. Yeah. So you're absolutely right. Doing more with less, uh, trying to help with a few right pieces, uh, because I don't know that you think also with, you know, with technology, but also with organization and strategy, you can do a lot with the small key things. Um, mm. And that's really right. much where we're coming from. So then, yeah, partly, partly frustrations from sitting, you know, a little bit stuck on the inside, but also yeah. seeing an opportunity that, yeah, there's, a, there's another way. And I think there's a good fit for that kind of service for, for uh, um, the right kind of companies. And uh, I also do think that that uh, see so many great, interesting startups in various ways. Of course, you got the whole biotech way, but also like me being from, from uh, Southern Sweden, um, Denmark, Copenhagen, you know, there's a lot of small companies um, all AstraZeneca closed down in Southern Sweden, gave room for, for, for a lot of people starting small companies instead. So I think that combination, absolutely some frustration, but also that opportunity of, yeah, let's some more flexibility, some more dynamics, some more speed of things, you know? Mm. Yeah, so I guess, uh, you know, again, like a lot of the entrepreneurs I speak to, uh, where others will maybe see these frustrations, moan about it, um, go to the pub and, and, and moan about it some more with, with friends. You kind of decided actually, rather than moaning about it, why don't we try and do something about it and streamline processes, try and you know cut down this red tape that is slowing organizations down and put that into one package that you're now to delivering to clients. Yeah. No, yeah, absolutely. And I think that's uh, that, that that's something I think also that's important for us and for me personally, right? Saying, you know, uh, why should be stuck with it? Also, yeah, do something about it. Moaning doesn't really help, right? So, so, mm. so let's see what we can do. What are the solutions? And I do think that's the way I, to some extent, seem to be walking around, looking at the world, right? It's in solutions. It's not mm. problems. So I like, feel like sometimes, like those of us are old enough to have seen the old Terminator movies, right? Where where, where Arnold Schwarzenegger walks walks around with 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 uh, until it die, kind of way scanning the surroundings, and he's mm. seeing, you know. And data uh, and, and facts on everything and it seems like my head is more geared towards I go around seeing solutions to things right and <laughs> and I think apply that in when I'm working but also apply that with starting you know the company and saying okay mm. uh, yeah again moaning is not really my thing it's solutions it's opportunities um, it, it's making things move and, and, and change especially again if you can do it with okay these small few right important things will make the big difference mm. so, so yeah we, we said you know why not Let, let's kick that off right Sure. So look, I guess look, that says probably a lot about yourself, the fact that you are always looking for solutions, you are trying to improve the way things are, are done. Um, you know, if we were to, to re rewind right back um, in terms of your background, your past, what has yeah. sculpted you to, to kind of be like this? How did you, you even get into the world of, of clinical research to, to start with? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it seems like many of your guests, right? They, they, I kind of stumble into this by accident, really. 
Um, 100%. On, on, I hear it so, so often, so often. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you do. Right. I mean, my, my background is really is physics. That's what I'm supposed to be doing. Um, um, mm -hmm. That's what I studied. Uh, so optics, lasers, uh, atoms, uh, smaller parts than that. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's that's my education and training. Um, I stumbled into the clinical research area during my my uh, university time, where, where one of my friends just one evening asked, you know, who can who can help out at my dad's company tomorrow? And uh, I was just like, I had to not that busy tomorrow. I always need some extra money to go skiing or having some beers or whatever it was, right? So I said, yeah, I'll, I'll join. And um, that company was the CRO. Right. Okay. So, um, I ended up doing some some extra work there inside of my studies, and um, mm -hmm. um, after I finished my studies, I kind of yeah hang hang on and uh, got a bit stuck. Um, I tried to get away. Uh, I was out for like three months at a laser optics company. Um, yeah. But uh, Edward was quick tour. Um, the, the CEO had apparently cheated a bit with the numbers, so uh, uh, it was not looking that good. And the company was about to go down, so they laid people off, including myself. So three months mm. later, I was back at the CRO again, and then I've been stuck ever this, since. This, the same CRO that your your friend had hooked you up with. with exactly, it actually was right. Um, I that was really you could say a lucky break. I had moved to 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 Gothenburg. Western yeah. Sweden uh, for this, uh, you know, job at the lace company. And um, again, we, I was just laid off one month before Christmas with one month's notice period since I had just started. Mm. Uh, and we just said, sorry, we'll go back, uh, back to Southern Sweden where we live at the moment. And uh, yeah. I, I let kind of my friends know and uh, they have just bought a uh, new suite of um, the clinical systems. So they just wow. asked, you know, can't you come back here and help us implement them? And yeah. So in that that's, sense, yeah, I guess way it, to continue, yeah. it was for you, you tried to, as you say, you tried to get away, got sucked back in and just again, rather than seeing it as an issue as, you know, the, the laser um, company had gone down, you've kind of capitalized on the opportunity that was there. Yeah, I, I think it is. I said, yeah, I was lucky as well, I guess, right? But it ended, I think it ended up fairly well, right? And, and, and I haven't really regretted it. Um, mm. uh, I don't do that much course you know, physics and laser optics anymore i see some you know some pk pd dynamics from time to time i recognize the uh, about that okay and stuff like that so mm -hmm. uh, but um uh, uh but, but other than that i now uh, don't think i miss it in that sense uh, i'm kind of have this kind of side public interest of physics but but uh, no i uh, i tried but i'm still here yeah, I think that's awful. Many years ago now. Yeah. yeah, I guess kind of says a lot about your mindset. Just you know, hearing about how, you know how you started off and how you got into it, and that positive attitude and looking for solutions. Kind of everything about you is is saying that. And you know, where where there have been sort of stumbling blocks or hurdles in the road, you've managed to overcome them. But you know, that kind of comes on to you know what you're now doing. You know, if you can to give me a couple of examples per se of. of how you're, you know, helping potential clients, um, you know, what you're doing them on 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 day, but going basis, kind of your now day to day role of of what you do. Sure, sure, yeah. I mean, I think first of you know one spin off of that, seeing opportunities. What what we also did and had a chance to finish up during uh, during 2020 was our mm. first own software. We so kind of you know seen kind of a gap to some extent or an opportunity there for for a software piece as well. Yeah. So we actually have developed what we call the TTC Trial Hub, which is a uh, is a is a uh, yeah our own software. It's a it's a site uh, portal, so it's it's a hub for the site to 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 uh, provide them information in a better and a more structured way. Uh, mm -hmm. There's some similar ones on the market, but we are kind of doing that and getting the same label of you could say more with less. It's 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 more niche maybe, or it's more lean, uh, a lot mm -hmm. more you know cheaper. So so that's again I guess it's of this opportunity thinking as well and say, you know, what, what are solutions and opportunities around that? Mm -hmm. um, but still, of course, the bed and breader, what, what, you know, what, what we do is, is consultancy work. And right now, uh, for example, uh, um, uh, just having one client uh, implementing an ePro strategy within the company, they are at the stage where, where, where they have more and more uh, patient reported outcomes or other outcomes. So this with an EPRO methodology, very operationally, practically, how do we deal with, with EPRO ECOA in our company mm -hmm. uh, is one piece I'm working on right now. Yeah. Um, I've just finished up helping uh, one company with a system implementation 
uh, what's called an SCE, statistical computing environment. Mm -hmm. uh, so that is an typical, you could say, selection and implementation, uh, uh, you could say project as well. Yeah. Um, and then I'm also uh, doing right now a uh, helping a small uh, Swedish client actually uh, with a uh, vendor. Uh, you could call that selection and implementation. So basically, big zero plus technology providers. How do we put them together in the right way? Mm -hmm. Who should do what? Which technology should we use? Uh, how do we create the opt optimal setting for our trial now moving from phase two to phase three? Yeah. So that's the kind of three main main products I got ongoing um, at the top moment. Sure. And look, I guess um, as a CEO, you know, you're normally juggling a lot of things. I know that for me, it's, you know, sometimes I'm involved with hiring. Other times it's, you know, looking at the, the accounts. Uh, other times I'm actually, you know, involved with the, with the recruitment and, and speaking to people. Um, there's, you know, looking after the podcast. There's a whole host of things, you know, for, for yourself, um, as you say, you're CEO and consultant. So you clearly still get involved. What What's, what's your favourite part about um, sort of your time at um, Tritico, you know, or, or the best part about the job, effectively. Yeah, um, sh sharing knowledge, I think. Uh, discussions, talking to people, and 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 helping with adding that piece of insight. Um, mm -hmm. I'll think that links to the training with you. I mean, that's that's where, um, you know, my favorite part, absolutely, right? Um, this this with, with 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 again helping, talking to clients, and and, and having adding that piece of knowledge that they're missing. It really helps them uh, with, with a few small things of, of getting things improved or moving where they need to be or understanding what they need to understand. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm definitely trying to, you know, scale, you know, cut away some of the other pieces um, if I can uh, in terms of administration, marketing, trying to get help to do that. Yeah. Uh, in terms of the best part, it's the sharing the knowledge, um, interacting with your team. Um, but also, you know, in terms of the, all the different functions that you do, just talk us through kind of that and, and why, why that is and, and other, you know, perhaps what you perhaps say is maybe not so enjoyable or, some, you know, some of the things that you'd maybe look at delegating. Yeah, as I said, you know, I, I got my, my good co-founder, uh, Magnus is dealing with, you could say, everything with economics and, and you could say the formal company management, uh, you know, he's really good at that and, and he kind of enjoys that part as well. So I'm really happy that he takes care of that part. Um, we got also one of my other employees who's really good at doing some of the, the marketing work uh, with, with materials and, you know, just taking care of, you know, getting things published on LinkedIn uh, shaping up the articles so they look nice. Uh, we tried to mm -hmm. publish uh, quite a bit of things. Uh, so um, that's kind of things I'm really happy to to have people helping me with. Um, and I think they are happy that I'm not trying to do them as well, I guess. So uh, yeah. that's a win-win, I think, within the company. Mm. Uh, so that, but then I think I also they will try to make sure I, I spend enough time Time on this part, as we mentioned, with the knowledge sharing, trying to create mm. also, you know, writing some articles, build some opinions, you know, adding some of that, uh, that piece, what I hope can be some value of, of, of sharing that in the, in, in the public space um, yeah. as well. I think that's important. I think that's something that, that, that the business needs more of. We are a bit, you know, protected sometimes. And I think there's a, there's a lot of gains for all of us if we can, you know, share knowledge and, and share experiences some more, right? Yeah. So look, I guess one of the things you mentioned there is, you know, LinkedIn and, and marketing and, and articles. I know that LinkedIn and marketing articles, fantastic, but it can be a huge drain on your time when you're trying to run a business a, as a whole. I know that's, you know, one of the things for me. Um, and we're going to have a perhaps look at getting a, a social media executive to, to help us with that. Um, but um, you said that you have posted a, a few things. So article wise, um, for, for those listening in, is there anything in particular that you've, you've put out recently that would be good for them to, to check out and perhaps add value, in, you know, for, for potential clients and customers in, in your space? Yeah, I, I don't think, I mean, um, we're trying to um, categorize them a bit and, and, and do them a bit of packages or series with a bit of a label on, right? Yeah. So uh, to help people, you know, navigate and what is it we, we, we need and what can be helpful for me. So one, one thing we've got going, uh, we now are at, at, at I've done four articles in the space what we call, call you know, in a clinical articles mm. series where yeah. we have started from the beginning. You know, if you're a beginner to this, if you're working at small biotech or to start up, what do I need to know about clinical systems and data? Where do I start? Mm -hmm. So that's a little bit more 
the heavy side of articles it's more a little bit of you know guidance manuals each article is like four or six pages or something so it's not yeah. it's not something you know you read at the bus stop on your phone on linkedin it's a little bit heavier but mm -hmm. also hopefully it's a little bit more you know hands-on guidance in you know where do i start and what do i think about and how do i approach this whole thing of clinical systems and sourcing and what have you right yeah um so that, that that's one piece if that's if you say where you are um the other more recent piece which we try to do a lot more frequent is, is what we call, you know, the treat on two cents. So that's more opinion based. Mm -hmm. um, I recently had one out on, on having opinions on, on responsibility splits in the business, which I'm not too fond of, for example. So that's maybe a little bit more provocative and trying to, to, to spark in some thinking of doing things differently, whether that is within systems, whether that is within, if you say, you know, how we run our businesses. Uh, so it's more over on that kind of what you call the opinion based side. Um, sure. And then just otherwise I can just, you know, yeah, uh, we, we try to, to publish on our website uh, as well free resources. So there are some, you know, manuals and some checklists and stuff like that that can be, mm. you know, handy uh, if you work in this space as well. Yeah, well, I think, I'm, I mean, everyone this over the past year has adapted, pivoted and, and changed a few of the things that they've been doing. I know for us, you know, I think that we've we've done a lot more changes than many, many other recruitment businesses. You know, we've gone kind of remote. We're, we're using Teams, you know, uh, video for you know internal training and external business development work. Uh, there's a whole host of things that we've we've taken on because we've had to adapt to how the market has been. Um, I mean, for for you guys, um, I guess you're perhaps you know I, I'd imagine a lot more tech savvy than than myself. But how has you know, kind of business in general been for yourself, you know, how and, and how are things going now? If you were to give us a, you know, paint a, a picture of, of how it's all going. Yeah, no, I think, you know, to be, to be honest, of course, 2020 has been a really hard year for us, all right? I think we definitely saw, you know, we, again, we're into the, you know, uh, change in implementation and do things maybe differently space, mm. like, right? And, and of course, when the whole thing, you know, the pandemic hit people, you know, just scrambling to, to keep their trials running, you know, and, 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 and just managing the situation, right? Getting all their employees working from home and all that. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that I've put on hold and put on the side was, you know, let's implement the new system. Um, mm. uh, so I think that was definitely seen that, that the product, you could say volume it alike, right? But the thing didn't went, well, definitely went, went down pretty drastically. Mm -hmm. Um. So, so we definitely saw that up until you say, late autumn, and then we started to see some sp things picking up again. Um, uh, so we see kind of you know so, some some more opportunities and more you know more work uh, you know to bid for at least. Mm -hmm. uh, and then from there, I think I see I see it picking up actually you know my reflecting on it in, in, in two different ways, right? One one is I think that people has been you know one category has been kind of really challenged by this whole thing, situation. Everything is up in the air. Everything is unsure. I don't mm -hmm. really know what to do. So when it comes to sourcing or when it comes to technology, I'll go for the safe bet. I can't really have more uncertainties, you know. So, so I'm really not willing to do any more you know controversial or or, or anything different. That mm -hmm. is kind of you know maybe i don't know if it's 50 50 but that's kind of one of the part of the dialogues somehow yeah i guess i'm kind of similar and, and how i've been sort of talking uh internally at my end is kind of control the controllables and then let the the other bits that where you need to adapt and pivot that's where you need to kind of be a bit reactive sometimes yes mm -hmm. you want to set yourself up for success with pro proactive you know systems and, and methods but control what you can and then react to the bits that are completely out of your, your control because there's there's no other choice I, I guess and you know it sounds as though you're saying the same sort of thing i, I believe yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, of course, this would, would control, which is something we like a lot in our business. You know, we really want to have things in control. We don't like risks. We don't like issues. So, so definitely, and I think that, of course, is a wise strategy, right? So much else is not controlled. So I need to keep this the control safe way, right? Mm. But saying that, I also do see, you know, uh, again, just on the other end, also people that, you know, this whole experience with working from home instead, starting to use technology. You know, some things are, of course, naturally, you know, disrupted and broken down. Mm -hmm. Some people are more willing to put them together in a new way. So, so kind of, and I just hope we can use that to 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 put things together. Part of it, you know, in a smarter way, because I think I do think we need to we need to do that, both when it comes to technology and, and also how we how we run our business. But mm -hmm. I do think a lot of people being sent home and seeing some of the just basic problems with working from home 
hopefully maybe start thinking about, okay, this with a user end, right? And, and again, for me, in that space with clinical trials, okay, let's, let's look a little bit better at how's the situation assigned? What do they need? Let's, let's try to put the systems together in, in a way that works best for them because they actually are the main users, the sites or the patients we were talking about. It's mm -hmm. not actually, you know, the in-house people. They might be working with this all day, but, but, but they are very few compared to the others out there. So these yeah. are some of the things that uh, this disruption maybe can help us in actually, again, yes, we get all the new and the fancy that people are talking about, right? Machine learning, AI, uh, virtual trials, all of that, fine. We need that as well, and that's great. But also, let's do the basic things good as well, right? Yeah. Okay. And look, I, I guess in, in that sense, um, as I say, look, I've, I've given you a quick insight into to us. So we've we've changed a few systems, protocols, and, and whatever that we're doing at our end. Um, you know, at your end, in terms of the challenges that you faced, what have you guys, what have been the, I guess, the biggest um, areas that you've changed and, you know, and used to an asset of, of what you're already doing? Um, and what have you, I guess, learned about yourself during this period? You know, what would be your, um, for, for anyone else listening in, what would be kind of your, um, sort of two cents in, into the hat as to you know what you would recommend what can be improved um not just for you know pharma but just in general sort of entrepreneurs businesses leadership um individuals yeah. yeah i think um i talked about the sales part before and i think you know very, very practically one thing we have done is trying to Again, we have had some 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 free time honestly this year, and, and finishing up our software was one piece. But but also trying to organize the things we do in a little bit of a better way. Mm -hmm. uh, we we have implemented a new tool, tool if you like, for managing all our sales, but also our product activities and other other activities. Yeah. So it, it's uh, we're using uh, as I say. Uh, you mentioned there that one of the new tools that you're using for your sales and, and managing things and um, is Monday.com. Um, yeah. that you mentioned right. I, yeah. I lost you for a second there. And how, how have you found that? How has it been sort of taken on with, with the team at your end? Um, I, no, I think very good, right? I mean, to me, it's one of the more kind of new and modern tools. It's more, you know, it's very flexible and dynamic and we use it for, for a variety of things. And it combines this with product management and task listing with interaction and, and, and uh, what do you call it, you know, um, like chat functions and messaging functions, stuff like that, instead of the, you've got one list on the side here and then you can send emails to your team here and then, mm. You know, so it, it brings more of the thing together. Uh, again, being very flexible um, and intuitive from the user end, uh, more more what I would say user centric. Um, it's not very fixed. You can add whatever you know columns of things you want, and you can use it in a variety of different ways. Nice. Um, and I think that helps us a lot. Um, it helps me get more structured, which I get, which I guess is good. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it, yeah, um, that has been kind of one one of those small things where where again. Maybe it's not a technology, but but in combination with actually structuring your work and you know in in, in, in a better way. Yeah. Uh, what's what we tell our clients? Of course, we should try to do ourselves as well. I was just about um, to say, LinkedIn, kind of which falls, be... falls back to that that whole thing of of doing more for less, doesn't it? You know, it's kind of just yeah. being strategic, being mindful of of where your time's getting spent, and and actually then being able to focus on on what's the most productive way of doing things. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, no, I agree. And I think um, when it comes to that productivity, I think also just personally, if like looking at some personal reflections on this, um, I've been forced into uh, situations like this, for example, right, where, where, of course, moving from meeting people face to face to, to, to try to meet people, both in the sales situation, but also in, in work situations, uh, you could say more and more online. Mm -hmm. um, Hearing my own voice on recorded video, seeing my own face uh, has been a learning for me. It was not really my my you know first preference of the way of doing things. Yeah. Um, making those cold calls or or writing that email to people I don't know, uh, which is also something again I, I was really great at putting that further out on the side. I'll do it tomorrow, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, so so that I think is some personal you can say learnings and growth during this year that that both this with having a structured approach. Of, you know, focus and first things first. Um, but also, of course, the, 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 the situation with the pandemic has kind of, you know, uh, yeah. helped me grow and develop it. Mm. Well, it's no, I mean, it's good to hear. And I think a lot of people have um, got the same feeling about hearing and seeing themselves on, on video. And I, I know that when I first got into it, I was like, oh, just, I, I found myself constantly looking at the, the, the bottom corner of my screen 
looking at, at what I looked like rather than engaging with, you know, kind of who I'm, I was speaking to. Um, and I think that that's kind of dropped now. Um, I'm so much more used to actually dealing with um, people on video uh, and just a lot more relaxed on it. Still hate the sound of my own voice when listening to anything back, but I think that is, surely that's a universal thing with everyone, right? <laughs> I, 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 I sure it is. You know, it's, it's, it's really something, you sound, it's just, I mean, that's, that's the blank, you know, you sound differently. Yeah. Uh, you know, recorded than, than you do in your own head when you speak, right? And, and it's a hard thing to get used to. Um, I think seeing, seeing your own face in the mirror is a little more similar maybe to see it on the screen. So maybe that's easy. I don't know. But I think it's it's absolutely for most people. Uh, it definitely has been, you know, for me, um, I, I I still don't like it. I don't hate it as much as I used to, I guess. Mm. Um, but but I think, again, it's 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 also this with, was, that was the best way. And um, uh, it's also about, again, solutions, opportunities, if that's, you know, what's needed, if that's what... Uh, uh, brings us forward okay then then it's fine, right, it's fine yeah anyway. definitely well look, I, I guess um I, I guess on the subject of, of moving forward um i know for us we've got some big plans for, for 2021 um talk us about what what's in store for both the world of pharma your clients and for, for you guys as, as a business what's uh on the horizon big year set up I think, of course, the, the pandemic pandemic will still, you know, be a big thing in, you know, this year this this year as well. Uh, but but as I said, you know, from a business perspective, with these things picking up, we we want to continue with uh, doing what we do and try to do that really good, uh, mm -hmm. more with less. Uh, we we talked about that uh, a couple of times. Um, and 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 again, the, the the consultancy advisor role is 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 our uh, you know bread and butter, and we will need we will definitely continue to do that. And we see some interesting projects um, coming up that we've been lucky enough to be involved in. Mm -hmm. um, we also definitely want to want to continue this with uh, knowledge sharing with our training program, develop develop that further. And and uh, we talked about the articles and and, and building opinions. And uh, yeah, I think for that it's been clearer clearer for me that during. Again, the, I guess the last couple of months, again, uh, and over Christmas and reflecting some more on that, I do think two main areas where I do even hope we will see the, the, the business um, and industry kind of change a bit and, 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 and uh, develop because I do think we need to. And I think one of them is, the, is, is uh, around, you could say, the way, way we run our business. I definitely do think, for example, that we need to look at how we do leadership and management. We are mm -hmm. so highly specialized. We've got these experts and specialists everywhere and we're specialist driven industry and that's fine, we need to be. But the one place where we normally don't have any you know, experts is leaders, managers. So, so that's something I'm a bit focused on at the moment. And, 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 and again, it's, it's, it's on the list for, for the, the shortly upcoming articles, um, opinion based articles. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's an area where I think that and how we organize ourselves and how we um, develop, uh, you know, our people and how we let them grow and, and, and how we can, again, you know, make sure that we, we, we get them to be the best they can be, because I think we mm. can do a lot better around that uh, in pharma in general. Sure. I was generalizing a lot, but that's I definitely do think and that that could be an area. And hopefully this kind of disruption uh, that we have seen the last year can can help us get out of the, the ordinary, you know, and, 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 and uh, start thinking, seeing a bit different from there. Sure. And look, on, on the leadership side of things, like I, I end up getting drawn into um, YouTube. I've recently been on Clubhouse listening to various bits and pieces as mm -hmm. well. You know, where do you draw your inspiration? Um, and, you know, what drives your thoughts on, on how leadership could, um, should go? Because I, I think there's, I guess there's different opinions and that's why it'll be, you know, it'll be good to see the article when, when you publish it, you'll definitely mm -hmm. have to yeah. sort of drop us a link and um, so that I can yeah. check that out. Cause you know, that's one of the things that fa fascinates me is, you know, mm -hmm. leadership, mentorship, management, you know, um, and, and how individuals, what characteristics they've got, you know, where do you draw your inspiration and, and thoughts on, on these things? Um, no, absolutely. I think, um, Three, three, three parts. Two of them are more or less the same. You can now uh, actually um, not really um, podcasts mm -hmm. like this. Uh, yeah. I think that that's great and inspirational, especially if it's includes kind of is uh, in a dialogue between people. Uh, you know, so so of course people is is the greatest source of inspiration. I think right. So podcast mm. is one source of, of inspiration, absolutely and learning for me. And the other one is books, uh, which of course is also you know people inspiration from people. Right? And then it's the meeting with people. 
Um, yeah. You know, that's the work situations, right? Um, it, it's listening to other people, talking to other people, um, and trying to, to sort of truly listen, uh, you know, and, and learn and see from other people's perspective. I think this, the, the meeting with people podcast, I think, is a great, great format and, and books. Uh, yeah. That, that will be top three ones, yeah. Yeah, likewise. Well, as I say, I, I end up, I, I delve into a subject, it then hooks me in, I'm then looking at the references there, and it just kind of diverts you off, and, and all of a sudden, you, you're you just expanding your knowledge all the time, and that's something that I like to be um, certainly doing. Um, so it's good to understand, yeah, where, where you're going as a business, what you're expecting for um, the world of, of pharma. Um, and I believe you, you've actually written a prediction, as you uh, highlighted, on a, an online magazine, which perhaps people might want to, to check out. Um, I, I think you uh, told me via email that it was Farm Tech, if I'm correct. Uh, it's, Far it's Pharma Tech Outlook, Pharma yeah, Tech, which is one Farm of those, uh, many of those online magazines. And um, mm. there was a link on, on uh, our uh, LinkedIn website and on our website, you know, homepage as well. Yeah. Uh, so it's, yeah, Pharma Tech Outlook uh, asked a couple of companies to do a prediction for, for 2021. And, and um, I did one. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a short, like a one page read. Yeah. Um, and, and, and they asked about technology rather than, than leadership and organization. So um, yeah, uh, there is a small prediction from, from, from me there. Um, I've touched on some of the maybe highlights from that here where do you think, again, of course, it was quite disruptive uh, year we have seen. So 2021, mm. uh, I think. I put it in a way that, that I think the ones that will have kind of best success uh, around clinical trials and put, putting your clinical trials back up if you like, starting in new ones, you know, yeah. partly will, you know, will be the ones that can put technology and, and processes together in a better way for the science. Because I think, yes, we're talking about patient centricity, virtual trials and all that. Yeah. Still, the majority of clinical trials we see at the moment today running or going to start, you know, with all the ambitions of 2021. Mm -hmm. Site is still to a great extent key, and um, Site has had a hard year year in 2020. They're Definitely. still in 2021. Mm. So honestly, putting things together in a way uh, where we actually put them in focus and, and, and give them a better solution, I think, will be one key aspect uh, of, of you know uh, how you well you succeed in getting your trials back up to speed, um, up and running, or whatever it is. Yeah. Okay. Well, look. Um... Yeah, good. To, it'll be good to check that out. I mean, I'll uh, perhaps ask you to send me a link and um, so I'll I'll do that. Take, take, take a look at that. But look, uh, it's been interesting to hear how you got into the industry and that your friend, um, whilst helping you pay for beers and skiing back in the day, um, yep. set you up for what you're, you're now doing many years on uh, very successfully. You know, you're into your leadership. It's been kind of great to hear your story. Um, but look, for, for anyone moving forward who perhaps wants to reach out to you uh, and get more of an idea as to, to what you guys are doing it um try to take on how you can perhaps help help them um as well as looking out for your articles that we, we've covered what's the best place to reach you is it linkedin are you active on on any other platforms clubhouse facebook what's the what's the best way to if you were to give us a quick um sort of summary of, of how to contact you and um who perhaps should should contact you sure no i mean uh, absolutely i mean Anyone, absolutely. I mean, I really encourage you know, you know, people engaging, commenting on the articles, or just reaching out with questions. You know, so feel very free. Whatever you know, your role is, whatever kind of company you're working at, you know, just just reach out, uh, and we'll see if we have something you know, knowledge, experience we can share that that can help you in, in your situation where you are. Right. Um, we are. We try to be active on LinkedIn. So LinkedIn is a good place to go if you're looking for TreatyCon. So you can just you know search for the company TreatyCon or my name. Um, so we publish our, a series of articles or post a link to them there. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also got on our website, triticon.com slash resources. Uh, it's also a bunch of, of articles and materials uh, that, that we, are, we are published. And uh, of course, all the contact information, you know, if you would like to use that as well. Um, also on that resource page is, for example, an experience catalog. So that's mm -hmm. examples of like, like in a way, company CV. So, yeah. so uh, examples nice. of tasks that we have had over the last uh, five years then. So that could also be a place to go and see if, you know, does these guys know anything about X? You can see there if we've done something with that already. So treaticon.com and uh, LinkedIn, Anders Mortin or Treaticon. Fantastic. Well, um, 
I guess, look, thanks very much for, for coming on the show. We'll make sure that we get um, all of the links uh, posted on an, our YouTube channel and our, and our website. So anyone listening in, you can check us out and you'll be able to find all of the links to, to reach out to Anders. Uh, but look, Anders, um, thanks again for now. I know that um, you guys have hit snow over in, in Europe, just as we have in, in London this week. Um, so look, I'll, I'll let you get off uh, for the day. But thank you very much again for, for coming on the Huxley Morton podcast. Thank you. Thanks so much, James. Appreciate it. Thanks. Great stuff. Thank you.